Well, hey, friends, this is Jennifer, and this is The Jennifer Allwood Show, the podcast for women who want to find freedom in both their life and in their business. I own a multi seven figure a year coaching business. I'm also a certified life coach. So I have the honor of helping thousands of women every single month make money in the online space and help them to get unstuck from whatever is holding them back, all without sacrificing their faith or their family. In this show, you're going to get the very best life and business advice, always with a healthy dose of Jesus. So buckle in, my friend. I'm so so excited that you are here. Well, hey, friends, welcome back to the podcast. This is podcast episode number 299. We're going to talk today about being scared of growing a business. And related to that, the idea of not being able to keep up. And I'm going to tell you where this um, idea came from. So we just recently launched my Better Way program, which we launched twice a year. I had several hundred people who signed up for the Better Way program. Um, and we have already started. We're knee deep. You can't still join anything like that. So, but what I, the reason I bring that up is because I had put on social media that the Better Way program was open and um, and asked like for those of you who are wanting to join, but you haven't yet, like tell me the reason why. And there was a precious woman named Lori who I'm going to read to you the interaction between her and I on social media. She said, I'm scared. That's my problem. And I said, so what are you scared of in particular? Is it taking my workshop? Is it growing your business? Are you scared of the economy? And Lori said, I'm scared of growing my business and not being able to keep up. To which I said, Lori, why do you think that growth equals not being able to keep up? And she commented back, I'm not sure, Jennifer. I just need to jump in and do it. I think I'm just really afraid of succeeding. I want to chat about this. I want to chat to those of you who are nervous about growth because you think that if you grow, you won't be able to sustain it. That's what I want to talk about on the podcast today. So I have some thoughts on why sometimes people attach success and growth to not being able to keep up. And hopefully I can explain it in a way that makes sense because it, it makes such, it's such an obvious like thing to me. So Right now, you're looking at your business through the lens of what your business currently looks like. So you're imagining down the road, your business being bigger, all these clients, all this money coming in with your current knowledge, with your current team size, with your current processes and systems or lack thereof. You're looking at the growth, but like you're, you're, you're sifting it through where your business currently is. Forgetting that when growth comes, then also opportunities for help to hire, to put new things in place come, right? So like, of course, right now you can't imagine If you grow, let's say your business uh, does what mine did four years ago. We went from a $500,000 a year company to a $2 million company in a matter of days. Okay, that was a huge leap. It was a huge leap. And growing pains like that, by the way, they, they can be very uncomfortable because it became super obvious to me in, you know, just a few weeks time, like, oh, smokes. Okay. We just added 1,100 new people into my monthly coaching group. we need help. I need help. (laughs) Things have just elevated to a level that I can no longer do it with the team that I have, which was just myself, a VA and my assistant. But what do I have now that I didn't before? I had cash. I had resources. I, and so, you know, I was able to pay to hire people to help come in and help me manage the success. Does that make sense? So I think so often we're looking and we're thinking to ourselves, you know, I I'm super scared to grow because what if I can't handle it? But you're forgetting that when you grow, there should be a lot more opportunity for you financially to bring in the people and the processes and the resources that you need to handle the growth. You're not going to grow 
and stay the size that you are like emotionally and in terms of um, just the way that you think and the way that you handle business. Does that make sense? And so it really is, it's like comparing apples to oranges. I'm afraid if I'm successful, I won't be able to keep up. Well, when you're successful, you have people around you that help you to stay caught up. You take a lot of the things off of your plate that you are currently doing. When you bring money in, then you're able to put so many things and people into place that make business for you easier. In fact, I'll go one step further. When you are successful and your business grows, and by the way, business growth should equal money in the bank growth, okay? When you're able to do that, so you grow and you've got extra money, you're able to then hire people full-time, part-time, contractors, employees, whatever. I mean, I could do a whole podcast just on that. You're able to hire people to help, right? Those people, sorry about that. Those people should be able to take everything off of your plate that either A, you don't want to do, B, you're no good at doing, C, steals your piece, D, you no longer want to do. So I think that we forget that part of it. We're like imagining success, but with our current tools and our current team. And it's just, it's not even the same. When your business grows and your revenue grows and your income grows, you can bring in the people and the resources that you need in order to do things in a better way, in a different way. And the idea of not keeping up, it's a lie you're telling yourself. The idea that you're not keeping up, honestly, I just, I think it's a lie that we tell ourselves. I think that the real rub, oh, I like that saying, the real rub. Oh, team all would. We need to like trademark that. (laughs) The real rub is that you're not sure if you can sustain it. That's the real rub. It's not that you're afraid you can't keep up. It's that you're afraid that you as a human, you as a person is not going to be able to grow, to stay in stride with your business. You're afraid that you won't be able to sustain that level, that you'll grow for a short period of time and you won't put the people or the processes into place to be able to keep it at that level. You're afraid that you'll go backwards, that you'll implode. And I think that that's worth a conversation, possibly worth a whole nother podcast. But the idea that if I grow, I'm not going to be able to keep up. I just, I I don't think that that's a valid reason to not grow. Does that make sense? You're going to have money in the bank you never had before. You're going to have people that you're able to hire. You're going to be a blessing to others. And you forget that like God doesn't elevate you and then just be like, all right, Jen, good luck, girl. Hey, Lori, I'm going to bless the heck out of your business. Hope, sure hope you can figure some things out. (laughs) What God does grow and accelerate and elevate, he also, I believe, will bring the right people and the right processes and whatever it is that you need in order to sustain that growth. And so listen, success and money, it doesn't have to change you. It can, it just amplifies like everything that you already are. Intentionally staying small because of fears that may or may not happen that are probably unrealistic, that don't even really make sense. Staying small on purpose, it's selfish. I said what I just said, what I just said. Staying small on purpose, it's selfish because every time you decide consciously or subconsciously, to do things to stay small, you're affecting somebody else, whether it's the people that live in your home with you, whether it's the family members outside of your home that need for you to make money, whether it's um, the people that you could be employing if your business was making more, and now they don't have the financial freedom that they need because you're intentionally staying small so that you don't have to hire people. So I think it's one thing if you're like, you know what, we just want to make enough to like make the light bill every month. Like, that's fine. We just want to make enough every month to make the, the car payment, the house payment. Like, that's fine. But if you're saying to yourself, I'm afraid of growing because I'm afraid that I can't keep up and you're intentionally sabotaging yourself so that you stay small, 
I do think it's a very selfish way of thinking because you have no idea who's watching you. You have no idea who's going to be able to slay their own dragons because they watch you slay yours. You have no idea about the people who are even in your household who are watching you and who are learning from you. And they know, they can tell when you're intentionally doing things that's fear-based. So listen, friends, be super honest with yourself about why you do the things that you do in your business. Why do you sabotage? Why do you stay small on purpose? In Lori's case, she just didn't want to take my workshop. (laughs) And when I asked her, she's like, I'm just afraid of growing my business and not being able to keep up. And I'm like, dude, when you grow your business, you put other people and processes into place so you can keep up. Making more should give you more freedom should give you more freedom. So I hope that this was helpful for anyone today who is staying small on purpose. I hope that you felt like I was giving you a hug and a swift kick in the pants at the very same time. Okay. Also, if you are in business, hopefully you have looked at the calendar and you know that we are in the most lucrative quarter of the year. Black Friday is just right around the corner. Will it actually be a day? Will it be a week or will they turn the entire month of November into just Black Friday month? Who knows? But I did make a free strategy guide for anyone who needs some help with their planning for Black Friday, whether you plan on just um, doing some things in your business for a day, for the week, for the entire month, whatever it is. If you need some strategy and some plans, you can go to jenniferallwood.com slash Black Friday, and you can download that absolutely for free. And if this was a podcast that touched you somewhere deep, would you just do me a favor? Would you take a screenshot of it? Would you share it on Instagram? That's one of the best things that you can do to be a blessing to us so that other people are able to find the podcast and we're able to get new listeners. And that way we don't run any ads to try to get the podcast out in front of people. We are nearing um, 5 million downloads, friends. And so you could help us with that just by sharing this on social. So much love to you. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Friend, thank you so much for listening to the podcast again this week. I'm so honored that you come back for every episode and that you share the Jennifer Allwood Show with your friends and family. Every time I see you guys post about it on Instagram or Facebook or something, it just makes me do a little happy. So thank you. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast if you never want to miss an episode. So you can go to Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or Spotify or any of the other podcasting places and subscribe each week so that every week you get the new episode when it releases. So just know that I love bringing you relevant content. I love bringing you great guests. And one of the ways you can help us here at Team Allwood is by leaving the podcast a review. So if you have just a second to do that, would you go over and leave a review for the Jennifer Allwood Show? Thank you again. You're amazing. I'm honored to be here. Until next week. Bye-bye.